hello welcome back to my channel T today our topic is running parallel or concurrent tasks in android using kotlin coroutines so basically imagine you have uh, five different tasks and those tasks are independent though those tasks have no dependencies uh, between them and you want to run them concurrently or parallelly so in this kind of scenario uh, we have a async await pattern of kotlin coroutines which is basically a, another builder pattern like uh, launch so this is particularly very uh, useful when you want to run uh, some your some of your tasks background parallelly and uh, which doesn't block the main thread so before uh, doing the real work or coding i would like to show you what we are going to build today this is a very simple app we have two tasks task one and task two and those two tasks are independent and we are going to uh, we want to run them parallelly so when i uh, start the job I start the bottom it uh, those two tasks have different compilation time and they uh, after their compilation they uh, give us the message and we have used async await to run those uh, tasks in background uh, coroutine or background thread and um, return the result in the main thread so this is our app and this we are going to build today let's start coding and one thing before starting i would like to refer uh, this video this video is in my channel kotlin coroutines tutorial for beginners uh, so you can watch this video first although you do not have any prerequisite knowledge about uh, coroutines i would show you everything in this video but uh, in this video uh, i previously done video i have shown how coroutine works it will definitely help but don't worry if you haven't watched yet i will uh, explain a little bit uh, of how coroutine works in this video as well so open our android studio project and this is our freshly uh, created project and i have done a couple of things here uh, like in this gradle i already have added the uh, necessary coroutines uh, little dependency here and i also have added the uh, this uh, dependencies in the video description please uh, use it if you want to use and i also have uh, made a design file in the activity main by the way we have only one activity and i want to make this uh, uh, tutorial as easy as possible the main takeout is to understand the async weight of android coroutine okay so this is the uh, this is the design file and i may, I may show you that okay. okay let me let me make it little bigger and we have a job button and a two progress bars to uh, that will uh, animate imitate the two tasks for those uh, two uh, the two progress bar for two tasks and this is basically our starter code and we will add uh, coroutines in our project so the first thing we will add a coroutine scope related variable so it will be late in it let in it var it will be uh, we name it a scope which will be type of coroutine scope so we need a coroutine uh, coroutine scope to start the coroutine and then what we want to do we if when the uh, we use the start job button we want to create a coroutine or some task okay so going back to our main activity and this name button's name was id was button job and you said on click listener and inside it we will uh, call invoke another oh first we will uh, instantiate our scope okay scope it will be scope okay so it will be scope and this scope will be uh, main scope so coroutine scope and it will be dispatchers 
dot main so why we have used main so first thing is we are um, we will start from our main our main thread so that's why it makes sense so we will use first main thing and okay when i um, progress you will understand why i have used the main thread okay so then we will definitely use the our background io or default thread later when we want to when we use the um, background calculation but first we will use the main thread okay then we will call a function name start start task we haven't created the function yet so we need to create the function so create function start task and inside it we will launch a coroutine okay so it will be um, scope this is scope so scope dot launch 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 is the builder of uh, our coroutine so inside it uh, we will uh, create the we will call another function so it will be get um, get data from network okay get data from network network okay and as we have not created uh, created the function we will create the function again okay so so by clicking this um, button we are uh, calling the start task and inside the start task we are uh, launching a um, launching a coroutine scope this scope will be main and from this uh, scope we will call a function get data from network and this name function will be uh, we email we just uh, assuming that this function is and get data from network it is not uh, necessarily getting data from network and we are assuming that it takes time it may take time as as long as say uh, okay as long as it may time say 3000 millisecond okay 3000 millisecond and it is showing that if, when I, I am using the delay it will be it will uh, ask for suspend function so this is the suspend function and as it is a long running task we will perform this task in our io thread sorry so in our io thread okay we are launching the coroutine scope from our main thread it is our main but as it is a long running task we will launch it in io thread okay so as this uh, context is changing so we will write with context and it will be it will be uh, what should i say io okay dispatchers dispatchers dot io okay and it it will be inside io block okay the delay will be inside the io block okay and i would like to add a um, add a variable for this because we will use it uh, in f uh, frequently so it will be private val job time and let's it will be it is 3000 okay and replace it here so okay it's in design it's asking for long okay we will press the too long okay now when this function will take uh, around 3000 millisecond or three second and after finishing that we want to get a result okay oh, okay just after finishing it 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 will um, send a send a message or send a string so it will be string and we send a return so 
so return we'll say task completed okay now after the task completion we want to show the result in our uh, main thread so when i go to the our this um, uh, this activity layout file it, we have a text view for it and its name is text result okay so we create another function which will use to show result in main thread okay so it will be it will be private suspend one it will be update y the name of the function update y and it will receive uh, take an argument as string so it will be message and string okay now so i want to show the result uh, in this text box so its name is text result so it will be text result dot text and i want to append this result okay instead of changing i would like to append so text result dot text dot twist string and i will create a new line and at last the message okay now why i have used the suspend because i want to show it inside uh, inside the our main thread so it will be with context and we will the context will be changed to main dispatchers dot main And we simply cut and paste it here so and we will call it from our launch so after finishing it we'll call our update UI okay well we need a um, something to hold that data so we create a variable name result and it will be um, initially it will be empty because we are uh, we are returning string type data so it will be it will be like result we will store result here result okay and we will send this result back to update UI. So what we are doing, let me recap it a little bit. So when we are uh, clicking the button job, we are launching a coroutine scope in main thread. Okay, this is totally understandable when uh, because we everything is starting from the main, we want to launch our coroutine is main thread. Okay, then we want to do a long running task we want to get data from the network and this network this operation takes time and this operation takes uh, almost 3000 millisecond so we want to send it to the background thread and we want to set it to the background thread which is dispatchers.io we already know that uh, we have uh, io thread for doing long running tasks and after the delay the this task return a result this result is a simple um, simple string and this we want to show the result in our ui but as we know the ui change ui related change should be done in main thread so our current thread is in dispatchers so i and update UI we use the with context of dispatcher main okay so we want to really track down everything so we want to lock some result we want to lock some result like here print and then maybe 
debug and it will be we will show the thread name here start task mm, we'll show that the thread name okay so it will be thread dot current thread dot name then we will uh, just simply copy it and we will we will also also want to show our inside our get data network network our which will run inside uh, the this io thread so it will be here and we need change the name name it like here okay and we also want to show the same thing in our update ui okay sorry it will be and it will be update ui okay now i want to take a further step that um, I want to measure the time, how much time it is taking. So we have a pre-built-in function name name time name. It is a block like measure time. So it will be for time, and it will be measure measure time in millisecond in this block. And inside the, this block, I will copy paste everything. Update UI, I do not need, I just. Okay. And after the, uh, I, I would also, this is the total elapsed time. It will return the total elapsed time of doing this task. Okay. So I will also show the total time. So print ln debug. total elapsed time and it will be the time well and what does it return it, it actually returns a job so so just I can just for showing it is it's not necessary so it will return a job let me show you one thing if you go that it is just returning a job so job is basically what we understand a job so a coroutine may have um, one or many jobs so as i have told my previous tutorial that this is the this is the coroutine a coroutine a thread may contains a couple of coroutines many coroutines and a coroutine may consist of a couple of job and by the way if this job may have this may be a parent job and this job may have in a child job so this is also possible to have a parent child hierarchy of the jobs of those jobs okay now if we run this so let me run this app so sorry going here let me first uh, show, see the locket and I would like to filter this locket first. Okay. And when I run this app, so start job is showing that debug start task main and um, debug get data from network. This is the get data from network and the uh, default dispatcher, the worker thread name and it is showing the total elapsed time total elapsed time is 3000 millisecond 3065 millisecond and then the debug is update ui main so let me run this app again don't worry worry about those um, uh, ui or uh, progress bar right now we will update those thing uh, couple of time couple of minute uh, later so let me run this app again let me clear this first okay so i'm showing you again that okay, running it first the debug start task is in main thread start task is main thread in uh, main thread and then 
the gate data from network we which we have used in dispatcher io which will be uh, which is running on the worker disp default dispatcher worker thread and it is showing the total elapsed time total um, time to run this thing in the background and also after running this when we uh, when we call this function and this function is running in main okay so you may already have uh, you understand how you know, coroutine works but we have a little problem so this is not a problem actually issue that when uh, the job involved the job only when we use launch and job the uh, job only uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't return the result it doesn't it just return what it returns what the thread returns but it doesn't return the result but in most cases when i when we access database or when we access remote data we the most of the cases we get we expect the result so job doesn't uh, give us the result but async await pattern they they return deferred instead of job and which we will see um, in a minute and those are really useful for getting data from any uh, background thread all right time to add uh, async in our project so async is uh, very similar to launch those are two different type of uh, builder of coroutine but one basic difference is launch doesn't return anything and uh, async returns the deferred or result well so let me do uh, a async block add async block first so it will be val result but we do not need this line anymore you know do not need this result so result it will be no, it will be type of deferred so deferred and the deferred will be type of what this function returns and this function returns a string so it will be string and we write the async block here async well it is written it is showing an error because we, it expects a return actually it is not return statement it, it expects a uh, uh, expects a string so if i write anything write a b c and the uh, error disappear so it is basically similar to returning a string okay so we will first we will copy this line and inside it will return the gate data from network okay we do not need this line here and also we will update we will cut it and paste it here update ui result so it is showing an error because this we need a, another function which is built-in function which name is await which is not basically uh, basically joining this data uh, implicitly in the in our thread okay so when i run this app a little bit of location we just name it uh, async okay so async and it will be will show the thread name here so run this app testing the app and when i press start job it is showing that this is the debug async is from main so the thread name is main and the gate data network is uh, from dispatcher so so gate data net network so gate data network this is a long running task and we have run it in uh, our io thread and after that uh, it will update ui the update ui it's also in the main thread so and the total elapsed time is 3088 and do not bother it um, bother about the um, progress bar right now i will uh, we will uh, modify our code 
in a minute so the total the normal the um, the takeout is the async and the launch so the, although we have launch because we have uh, we do not need this job anymore so we deleted it so async and launch is working in similar fashion but async has an advantage and it is little more intuitive uh, because it returns the result okay so far we have worked with single task but time to add a, a another task and we want to run those two tasks parallelly just uh, just as uh, our let me show my uh, show our final product and when i press it so these uh, two tasks they are running uh, parallelly okay so we will uh, add some some uh, variables right now for showing the for handling the progress bar related things so it will be okay, let me copy paste and it will be progress uh, start and progress max so it will pro So start will from will be from zero, and maximum will be hundred. Okay. And one job will take we name it as job time one. One job will take uh, three thousand millisecond, and another job will take four thousand millisecond. Okay. So it will be four thousand. Okay. And we will create another similar uh, okay here we will um, we will try to add an uh, try the functionality of progress bar okay so we will create a for loop here mm, so it will be delay the and okay let me run this for loop here. so it will be and it will be i in progress start which is zero from progress start to progress max uh, max so progress max and the delay will be job time one so delay will be job time one divided by max progress max okay progress max and as they are integer we will make it long and dot too long and then we will call another function or we'll call a uh, debug first we will show a debug so print ln and it will be debug Sorry, it will be debunk and it will be. Mm, okay, I do not need this here. Okay, I'll simply copy paste. And I will also like to show the value of this i. Well, so it will be. I and here okay and then we will uh, progress the status of the of our progress bar okay so so we will create uh, we will call a function show progress bar one and this function is not created yet so I will create this function create function progress bar okay and in this function uh, in this function we will uh, just uh, because uh, okay as this we we are going to show the progress bar it should be uh, done in the main thread so we will make it a suspend function 
suspend function and inside the suspend function we will change our context to main so with sorry with context and it will be dispatchers dot main because everything uh, UI related thing should be done in the main thread well and here there are two progress bar we will want we will work with this is progress bar one and this is progress bar two okay so it will be okay it will, we will take it a i and which will be integer make it i and we will return this i okay so for every increment we will show a debug uh, we will show a uh, log and we will update our show progress bar okay we will update our progress bar and by calling our show progress bar one and here we progress bar one progress bar uh, one dot progress the progress will be i okay and we will also return a message the same message here mm. okay we do not need to uh, <laughs> make it uh, make uh, the log log cat lengthy so we just omit it and we will make it the name is get network one and it will be one and we will simply make it name it like test one okay task one completed now we will just simply copy paste it because task two will be the same just compilation time is different so it will be network two sorry network two and it will two we will call two task two completed and okay well and this is all about now we will um, create uh, okay now we will create another result so it will be and we just simply copy it and paste it and it will be result 1 and it will be result 2 and we will call network get data from network 2 and async this time debug async 1 and it will be debug async 2 okay now after this is very important please uh, pay attention that after getting result 1 and result 2 we will update our UI okay so let me show you uh, I will show you after a um, couple of minutes why we have added uh, the two lines right after it why doesn't read right here or here okay so when I run our app well I have forgotten two things so uh, as I have said that two tasks have different uh, compilation time so get data from network we refer this uh, job time to and we have another mistake because in show progress bar we are progress uh, we are uh, updating the progress bar of one so it will be two and additionally we will do another thing to make our progress bar look our progress bar a uh, little more uh, little prettier so it will be progress bar one dot scale y we are just scaling up our y axis so it will be 5f and simply for the same thing for the our progress bar 2 okay and run our app again app, well uh, let me make it little bigger the lock app and 
press the start job and we can see <laughs> that task one is uh, task one and task two are running independently and because uh, they have one have uh, 3000 time millisecond and uh, one will have 4000 millisecond that's why one is running faster than another and most interestingly the lock at the debug async one and async two are run have started from main thread so this is our uh, uh, async job actually so async this is these two are from main thread and when we call get call from the get data from network and get data from network there are two tasks so one is get data from network one and another is get data from network two so get data from network this is at the when the value is zero so when the value is zero so it is showing in which thread it, it was working and when it is for so every data you can see so see by yourself and at last our debug update ui main so update ui got called from the main because we have already seen that the update ui is uh, actually working on the main and here is the total elapsed time so so actually we have seen that how actually those um, tasks uh, these two tasks work uh, parallelly or concurrently let me show you again so start job so one is taking one will take three seconds and another will take four seconds and after compilation they will uh, append the result in the text box so one more thing that how what if if those tasks are sequential so let me check so we want to do that uh, after task one finish after the finishing of task uh, finish of task one then task two will finish how we can do it we have written this line because uh, in a, for a reason that we if we put this line say update ui dot result one this one in this here so what it will do uh, after finishing the uh, this task this long running task the result one will append in the update ui from here from here the data will append that this thread will be blocked and after this this result will be joined and this thread will be blocked let me let me show you again let me run it and from our app if i as we have used uh, await function right after this um, uh, async so what will happen so press it it is first <laughs> so it's blocked the first thread and after task one is finished the task two here is working okay so um, if you want any con um, any uh, sequential job use this await right after um, the async block and if you want to parallel just use it after all your async tasks okay this is the main take takeaway of our uh, this tutorial so let me uh, fix this code and run again and when i press it well our tasks are running parallelly or concurrently so uh, we have learned how to use async and await if we want to run our um, coroutines parallelly or tasks parallelly so um, you will uh, have will have no problem if when you want to use this kind of work in your real project so this is the end of the tutorial thank you for watching and if you like the video smash the like button and and uh, please subscribe if you not subscribed yet so signing off today good night